Welcome back everyone to another Terra Fantasy video. We're looking at Saku Fua here and her advancements. We're gonna do a little di deep dive into her skills, her abilities. I do have her weapon at 150, which is currently the max where we are right now. You need to be level 80 to be able to take it to the next tier. So this is her at maximum and we're gonna be checking out her stats, her gear, uh, advancements, and looking at the best comps now and also in the future. So let's dive in. So the first thing you want to know about Sakifua is that she has two playing styles, one with excited flow and silent flow. Now these are essentially DPS tank. If you have two tanks in your team, you'll have silent flow. If you have two DPS in your team, you will have silent, you will have excited flow. She is versatile. She can play as a DPS or as a tank, which is what makes her so good. So now that we have that underway and that understood, Let's check out her other skills. So we have Rage Stream here, launch five heart stream attacks while on the ground. You're seeing that on screen right now. The first attack deals 42%, then it's 29%, 45%, 70%, and 102%. Each of the attacks gain an attack damage bonus, which is 188, 130, 199, uh, 312, and 453 respectively. It is quite nice. It's a good bread and butter combo. It's pretty much a standard hits. Next we have the air split, which basically is much like the standard five hit combo, but this one is in mid air. And as you can see, the numbers are a lot higher with this one, especially that final attack. You've got 47%, 43, 54, 76, almost 77 really, and 170%, with the attack bonus being 209, 193, 239, 340, and 752. Pretty good damage, but I wouldn't really advise for this. I'll get to that later why, but this on paper does definitely look better than what is on offer there. Now we have the Excited Flow. This is the DPS version. This gives you in, line, in the Excited Flow mode, Tap and hold normal attack to trigger the skill. Lunge forward with a swirling multi-attack, dealing a maximum of 200% of attack plus 881 damage. You're seeing that on screen right now. It's a very, very powerful ability and one that actually goes really nicely with Rage Stream. If you do like four attacks and then go into that, or the fifth one and then tr try to weave it in on the fifth one, it's possible a little, the timing has to be right, if you manage it, you get some really good damage. Next, we have the Silent Flow Barrier. This is the defensive one, as you're seeing on screen right now. It's fine, it's, it's pretty much just a defensive ability that unleashes two attacks. You can hold it, so it gives you that little bit more ants about it. So in Silent Flow mode, tap while launching normal attacks or tap and hold the normal attack to trigger the skill. Hold the attack button to keep the anticipation. Release the button to deal 127.3% of attack plus 562 damage. This number obviously will vary depending on what level you have your skills at. I've got it at 15, which is the maximum. But if you have it at say level 10, it will be lower. Just a heads up. When received attacks during the attack king period blocks 20% of your max HP, which is really, really nice for attack. It just absorbs it. And yeah, it's really nice. Frostle, tap and hold normal attack while airborne or use normal attack while climbing, jumping backward or using the jetpack with normal attack to trigger. When falling, deal damage equal to 30.4% of attack and 134 each hit. Upon landing, deal damage equal to 76% of attack plus 336 to nearby enemies. Her dodge, dodge is dodge, which is what we all know. But this one here, the polar front tap normal attack during the short period after dodging forward, dash and turn around to attack the target dealing damage equal to 277% of attack plus 1,224. Again, this plus attack will vary depending on your skill level. So skills, this is where it becomes interesting. We have got excited flow and silent flow. Excited flow, you'll dash forward as you're seeing on screen right now. Temporarily immobilizes enemies along the path, dealing delayed damage up to 445.3% of attack, plus 1,967. The cooldown for this is 30 seconds. It's a little long, but when we get into our advancements, this works out quite nicely. 
Now, when we're looking at silent flow, the castle silent flow skills to begin to charging up for free set up to three seconds continuously taunting nearby targets and absorbing damage up to 60 percent of max hp this is really cool because the only other character that can actually taunt is humor so that makes her a very valuable tank if that is your playing style if you don't want to play as tank this part of this video will basically mean nothing to you because the part you're interested in is this one here which is super dps but at the end of the charge deal frost damage equal to 408 percent of frost attack plus 50 percent absorb damage to targets and 20 percent of the unconsumed value is converted to hp recovery so you're making a lot of hp recovery here which is really good and to silent flow when fortitude resonance is activated that's two tanks excited flow flashing stream is replaced by silent flow constant stream and to excited flow when fortitude resonance is not activated when you got two dps the wanderer can gain sword shadow which follows them around when using psychic for skills those are the little orbs that you see going around her or in a kind of die in a pentagon shaped version the pentagon shaped version is the tank version whereas the fluid circle version is the excited flow the dps version they will deal range damage equal to 175 percent of frost attack with a cooldown of surge 10 seconds so they'll every 10 seconds they'll do 100 you know damage equal to 175 percent of attack while in excited flow this is the dps sword shadow will release flow when the wanderer deals damage with any weapon which inflicts damage equal to 45% of frost attack on the first hit target and recovers HP equal to 57% of the damage. That is insane. The maximum recovery each time cannot exceed 100% of attack and it has a cooldown of 0.8 seconds. You'll be healing yourself all the time in DPS mode. This is really good. While in Silent Flow, after Sword Shadow releases Surge, the Wanderer obtains free blocks for 10 seconds and a maximum block capacity cannot exceed 15% of max HP. Each successful block deals counter attack damage equal to 225% of frost attack to the target and the shatter of surge increases by 100% with an added taunt effect. It's that taunt that makes it so special, but the damage on this is really, really nice. Finally, we have the discharge, which is Heart Lotus, when weapon charge is full or phantasma is triggered, remove all debuffs from the wielder and dash toward the target with a combo attacking upon switching to this weapon, dealing damage equal to 536%. Now on the CN version, this was in the 8900s, but they have reduced that for this one. And the attack bonus is 2368. So that is her skills. She is extremely versatile, can be used as a tank if you're a glorified tank. If you've been playing with Huma all this time, you now have a second option. If you are a out and out DPS, this is also a, you know, a fantastic um, option for you. Now, in terms of team comps right now, we have Tsubasa. Ideally, you want Tsubasa at three stars, not one like I do. At three stars, Tsubasa becomes really, really potent and powerful. You want Frig, and then you want Sakifua. Now, why is this important? Well, first of all, let's check out her advancements so you'll understand. If you missed Frigg before and missed out on the Frost Resonance, you're in luck because Sakifua is an actual Frost Resonance and will increase your attack by 15% when paired with another Frost. Obviously, here we have a trio of attackers, so it's automatically activated and you gain a Frost Resistance of 25%. So, what's, let's check out her first advancement. When Frost Resonance is activated, all weapon skill cooldowns are cleared every five times weapon skills are used. And the damage of flow and counter attack is increased by one time for the next 25 seconds. Now, this is pretty much her bread and butter. This is so powerful, it's crazy. So how you would um, approach this in combat is, you start off with Sabasa, go in, use her skill, pop her buffs so she's got them on. Then you'd switch to Frigg, Put her domain down, then switch to Saki, use her main skill. That's free right there. Then what you would do is switch back to Subasa, because by this point Subasa's one will be up. Use the skill, reapply the buff so it's up, then switch back to Frig, get a few attacks in. That will trigger by the time the cooldowns are up your charge. Go to Saki, use her charge 
then use a skill. And at that point, that's your fifth skill. Once you've activated your fifth skill, you can reuse it immediately. And you get the idea basically, right? It, you're basically hot swapping continuously and it's just a barrage of attacks. It's really, really powerful. The second advancement is increased current weapon base attack growth by 16%. That's a no brainer. Her third one is really cool. Excited flow, increase the damage of sword shadow surge to 350%. That is basically this, sorry, this skill here. Where is it? If we go to, that is this one here. It increases this by another 350%. So to me, A3 is pretty much her sweet point when it comes to actually making her a god tier character. A1 is a must, A2 is nice, A3 in my opinion is where you pretty much, you know, attain god tier status. With Silent Flow, the cooldown of the Sword Shadow Surge becomes five seconds. Four stars increases the current weapon's base HP growth by 32%. Would have been really nice if it was attack, but it's not. Number five, freeze the target and trigger Fantasia upon surge hitting the target. Share cooldown with the Fantasia triggered, but it just makes it easier to trigger Fantasia. Um, is it a must have? Absolutely not. Not even four stars is a must have. Six stars upon hitting a target with surge increases frost damage by 11% for 15 seconds. Upon triggering block with the sword shadow, reduce the frost damage dealt by enemy targets by 25%. So this is, even the six stars is more of a niche because you're not fighting anything with frost. Maybe later on when we get like ice boss, a boss that's dealing ice damage only, this will be really handy. But for now, six stars just seems like a waste. Five as well. I mean, if you stop to A1, you're good to go. If you got A2 like I did, you're even better. A3, that should be your cutoff point. I, I just don't see any reason for you to go any further than A3. And that's it, guys. That's pretty much my overview when it comes to her skills and her advancements. A, you know, three stars is where you pretty much want to stop. Now, Obviously, there are other characters coming in the future, most notably Alice. So where does Alice fit into this situation here? You won't want to replace Frigg. Frigg's domain is just too good. And obviously, you've just got Saki. Saki, you want to keep a hold of. Now, Sabasa is your main buffer. At A5, she becomes really, really, really good. A6, even better, right? But the reality is, once you get Alice, Sabasa drops. Sabasa is still a good one, but if you were going to replace anyone, Sabasa goes bye bye, Alice comes into this slot here, and then your comp would be Alice, Frigg, and Saki. Otherwise, you can also go with Alice, Saki, and Lin if you don't have a Frigg. So you've got that combination as well. Now, with 2.1 approaching, Lin should be coming with that. If you get Lin, my ultimate assumption is Sabasa is still going to go, and Lin is going to come in at her place. It's that simple. Of course, if you've got an A6, it's going to be a hard toss up depending on how many stars you're going to get with Lin. A3, is, I'm hearing, is a sweet spot as well. But obviously, that requires a lot of investment and a hell of a lot of luck to get your A3. But you know what? It is what it is. That's the video. I hope you've enjoyed this. And until the next one, stay safe, everyone. And I will see you in the next one. Remain legend. Mm -hmm.